Hey everyone, this is Ian here with Create Studio. I am here to show you how to create this video that I made using our newest character that we developed named Alice. Hi, I'm Alice, your new go-to character that can help add depth and style to your storyline. Whether it's designing, cooking, or working as a contractor, I can fit into pretty much all of your scenes. With countless outfits to choose from and over a dozen different actions, I can help bring your vision to life instantly. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to start with a background to show where your character's environment is. All right, so then what I do is you go up to Studio, Backgrounds, and then you'll search in here. For me, I wanted my character in the park. So then I go down, and then I search for the ideal spot for my character to be in. So I chose this one, City Park 10. So what you'll do is you'll click this little download button. You can see I already downloaded it because it's empty here. So you'll drag that into the spot where you're gonna have underneath everything. All right, so then now you'll go in and you'll go to 3D character. So here, because uh, Alice is our newest character, we have her at the top. And all of these up until here are Alice. These are all the different formations of Alice. So for me, what I did is I stuck with this one for the most part. So I dragged her in. Okay, so now she's that size. So what I did is I went into settings, properties, and then I scaled it up and showed it about that because that's about like what it would look like to have on the sequence. And then I go in and then I found which ways that I wanted to animate her. So this one right here, I had her jump in and then had her talking to the camera. So what I did was I clicked on this Alice. This is the new one. And then I went up here. And then click on jump in. So now that's where the first one goes to. And then I add another action. Okay, so then I have her talking to the camera. And now I open that up to the edge. So now, here I'll actually just replace this one. So I had her jumping in from the side. Hi, I'm Alice. And so now what this does is that this allows right here for the voiceover that I created. And I'll show you how to do that now. So what I did is you go over to music, speech. And you just say what you want her to say. Hi, I'm Alice. And then you'd click generate speech. You can change the stability and clarity. Okay, so you could choose the different voice. So you do male or female. Mine was Suzanne, I believe. Either you run the... Yes. And so, like, I'll save that so that I know that's the one that I have. So you also can choose... You can differentiate the stability, make it a little bit more stable of a voice, and clarity so that you can have it uh, be tuned to the way that you want it to sound. Okay, so then when you do that, you would click Generate Speech. And you preview. Hi, I'm Alice. And then you'll adjust the stability and clarity from there, and then you can import it. So when you click import, that'll go to your main uh, media folder. And then usually I would change this to so that I know what is what. And then you would drag it down to your timeline. And then since I already have the rest of this stuff already here, I'm just going to use that same other one up here. So I'll remove that really quick. So now here, because this is the, the voiceover speech that you can use for Alice, so what you do is you click on this, and you right click, and then you can sync with Alice. So this is a really cool feature where it's gonna be able to lip sync uh, her actual voice uh, to her mouth. So now you'll see. Hi, I'm Alice, your new go-to character that can help add depth and style to your storyline. Isn't that crazy? Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to change her outfit. So previously we were on actions to show like all the different movements that she has. And then you'll go up to customize. So now I really like her top, her, her top so I'll keep that the same. I'm going to change the pants. Um, sport pants. Okay, and then I'll change the color. The bottom. Change this to like a little bit like a brighter purple. Let's go to hats. Let's give her a beanie. OK, 
okay. I'll keep the color. Somewhat the same. So now she's kind of the same color. All right, and then let's stick with the shoes actually. Shoes, make them darker, no. That white. That would be the darker. Cool. Okay, now she looks like she's going right out in the cold. Hi, I'm Alice, your new go-to character that can help add depth and style to your storyline. That's great. Okay, now I'm going to show you the other sequences. Okay, this scene's a little bit more dynamic because it has multiple things going on. I'm going to show it to you first and then I'll run through how I did it. Whether it's designing, cooking, or working as a contractor, I can fit into pretty much all of your scenes. Okay, so this one is a little bit more advanced, uh, mainly because I have each of these three kind of in, inside of both scenes in a way. Um, what I did was I created this first one, which is the graphic designer. So what I did was I, I put Alice inside of this scene. It was a home office. Had her sitting down working on a laptop, as graphic designers do. And I have the background mask, which is covering the home office. So I'm going to show you really quick. I'll just delete it so you can see. So it's kind of cut out right there. And then I have her leg cut off because that's where the other piece is. As you can see, it's like kind of cut off. So now she's inside of that other scene. So the way that I did that was I had the background mask is, is covering the home office. So what, what you do there is you go to your background, which is mine is the home office, track mat, and then you mask the background mask. So that's what it, it cuts out using that shape. And then I put Alice inside of the scene. And then uh, once I did that, I have this bottom part is, is what's cutting her legs off. So what I do, so here I can show you that as well. Delete that. So now, in a way, this is Alice still sitting on top of the scene. But then when you take away, when you add that, that bottom mask in, it really shows what she's actually, where she actually is. I'll add the mask back. All right, so the way you do that is that you click on Alice's mat or Alice's layer, go to track mat, and then you would go to bottom mask, which that's what I named it because it's for the bottom. And then it cuts off her legs. So now I'll go back into Office Alice. And then what I did there was I just took the graphic designer and then I duplicated it and then I swapped out each of the characters and their background scenes so that I can have multiple versions of Alice within this scene. So now the way that I did uh, the animation of this was I had clicked on the sequence that I wanted to use. I went to properties, I have this in the middle. Sometimes you could have it either on the anchor point on the middle or the bottom. The bottom is so that it can animate from the bottom of the, the asset, so it would be right here. Um, here I wanted it in the middle because when it was on the bottom, it dragged down too far, so I just kept it in the middle. And then I had this, I went to animate up, so what I did is I took scale and then animate upwards so that it went from zero scale all the way up to 100. And then it just animated all of those. And then I put them in the position that I wanted them directly because she says graphic designer, chef, and then contractor. So I had it go in order right here. So you can see in this, it says Alice feet mask. So what I did, because in the main sequence, I have the entire scene moving upwards as my transition, so I wanted to cut her legs off because otherwise you would see her feet dragging from the bottom. So I did the same thing as before, is that I did a track mat, Alice feet mask, which is that's the one that's right up there. And then I had that where it cut it off. So all of these, I did the exact same thing. I took the uh, generated speech, the AI uh, generated speech, and then I added sync with Alice one, which is this. And then whether it's designing, cooking, or working as a contractor, I can fit into pretty much all of your scene. There we go. 
Whether it's designing, cooking, or working as a contractor, I can fit into pretty much all of your scenes. There you go. And so all of these are animating up because the sequence before, the sequence right here is animating up as well. So it kind of like goes with it. See, that's where I was saying like if you cut off the, like the, if you use the mask to cut off the legs, it shows like that's the end of the, the bottom of the frame. So I had this animate up and then you have underneath here, these are multiple Alice's doing several of the different gestures that we have for her. Okay, so I'll go into the kitchen Alice. Okay, so I did the same thing as all the other ones as I started off with the background to show exactly where Alice is at. This one right here represents many of the different actions that Alice has. So here I have Alice using the iPad, celebrating, dancing, pointing to the left, pointing to the right. So these are all the different, many of the different actions that she has. And then I have the speech that I have uh, as the voiceover in the background. With countless outfits to choose from and over a dozen different actions, I can help bring your vision to life in... Okay, now the final sequence is the CTA of Alice. So let me go into here. CTA stands for call to action. That's just something that you want to end with uh, just an action for your viewer to be able to go and do something um, uh, that's behind the reasoning of why you created the video in the first place. Okay, so I'm going to play the end for you, the CTA. Add me to your next project. Okay, so what I did here is I did the same thing as the first one. I had her jump in, so it was a good way to bookend the actual video. Um, I had her jump in and then wave to the camera saying bye. So here, it's all the same thing. I did the background. For the background, I just had a shape. Um, something with a mask as well because I had this animate in. Um, by rotating from the bat the bottom right hand corner to make things a little bit more different and just make it more appealing. And then I took a regular park scene and then I put a background over it, but then I also had the background in a blend mode as screen so that it just looks like it's something that's that's just different. So I'll go back in here and the way that I had created these uh, these shapes was just something to just make things uh, more appealing to the eye and just make it nice. So I animated her in having her waving and then I did the same thing as before. I right clicked on the speech sync with workout Alice. So then her lips were able to sync up to the actual voice. And then you see right here it stops talking and then she stops. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the main timeline. I'm going to show you how I made the entire video a lot more dynamic. Okay, so here's the entire scene or the entire video. So here I'm going to show you how to use the camera. Here I, I wanted to have each of the sequences kind of blend together. So the first two sequences, the camera is pulling out. And I wanted to do that just so that it was an, a, uh, an easier blend of the scenes to transition with each other. So it's the same thing, uh, having the, the character being the main focus and then having the camera pull out. So what you do uh, to add the camera, you go into Effects and Components. You go down to Components and you click on Camera. You'll drag it in here and then when you add that, that camera will, will there was this little camera will pop up and then you'll have an empty timeline that looks like this right here. But because I like this camera and I want to show you guys how these all move directly, I'm going to keep these cameras. Okay, so the way you add a new camera is you just double click on the spot where you want another camera. So I'll delete that. So this bounding box right here is where you're showing the camera viewport. Like that is exactly what the camera looks like. So here, and you, you want the camera to be set at the beginning and then the end. So I'm gonna move that over so that I can show you. So here at the beginning, this is where my camera is going to be showing. And then down here at the end, right before, where did we go? There we go. You can see how it's expanding between both of them. So here, so it goes there. You can see it. this right here is 
in the animation itself. Let's see. In the animation itself, you can see that that it's it's scaling up. That is really just showing the camera being pulled back in space. See, so when you see them together, I'll show you right here. Depth and style to your storyline, whether it's designing, cooking, or working as a contractor. See, so it kind of blends them both a little bit closer together. So I'm gonna put this back. And the way you do that is you will take this first sequence. This is where I wanted to start. And then this is where I wanted to end. So I'll, you would you would start lower and then you would drag this open more. That's how I would want it to end, like this. And then so then when you do that, this very next one, that's where this is going to start, is in this position. So you'll start there. And then what? So here, let me get here. This is back to where it was. So this is where it starts. And then in this next sequence, you could see this is where I want it to end. And then right here, so I added another camera. So this is where it starts, is down here in this corner. And then you'll see it pan across. And it will show the rest of the Alice characters. To add a camera for your next sequence, you just double click and it'll add a camera right there. So now, since this is where it ends, I want to expand up to be able to see the rest of this sequence right here. So right here, I'll go to the end, and I'll expand it. Let's have it full. Hmm. Okay. Let's so see, watch. See how it expands? So this is where it ends. And now, this is where I see the next sequence coming in. I'm going to drag this over. Pull this over to here. So this is where she lands. kind of want to have it a little bit closer to the end. Here we go. Nice. Final piece is the music. I'm going to delete this so that we can start that. All right, I drag this down. So here's the end of my video. I'm just going to go in. I'm going to cut this down. Delete that. So I click on here. And then what I like to do, I go up to, I right click, edit audio fading. So you can see this is at 100% right there. And then I like to have this around two seconds. You can have it longer depending on the video and what you want it to really sound like. But I like to have it to where I can have it fade out to the end of the video. And so I'll have it start here and I'll show you. Add me to your next project. All right, now you have a bunch of different tools that you can utilize for your next project. Go and try out our new character, Alice, and let us know what you think.